something in for the coach to do or Wayne to do. Yeah. And I'd show him how to do it. And mm -hmm. A lot of times do it for him. And What was the most, of that one scene, what was the most thing you had to worry about on that? What's that, going underneath? Yeah. <laughs> Getting run over. Hi there, film fans, cowboy fans, western fans. I'm Rob Word, or as some people call me, Lucky Rob. I may be one of those people calling myself lucky because I feel so fortunate having met so many of my heroes that I had grown up with. One of those heroes is Mr. Haney from Green Acres, Pat Buttram. Well, you're right, he's not really a hero. He's Gene Autry's B-Western sidekick. But to me, he was a hero because every year, with the Golden Boot Awards, he would come and do the opening monologue. He was our master of ceremonies. Never anyone ever better than Pat Buttram. In 1986, there was a special tribute to the most wonderful stuntman, the godfather of stunts, Yakima Kanut. And Pat was the master of ceremonies from that. And I was lucky again, lucky Rob. I took my Betamax home movie camera and shot Pat's monologue. And I laughed so hard that the camera starts shaking. I think you're going to enjoy what Pat does. And then, even after that, oh, 40 years ago, Pat and I went to do interviews with Yakima Kanut, Harry Carey Jr., Iron Eyes Cody, Regis Toomey, all about working at Republic Pictures. I can't find the Regis Toomey interview, but we do have a portion of the Yakima Kanut. And you'll see on the wall... This hat hanging by Yak, and it's 40 years old, actually older, but you'll see this, and it's Lucky Rob's hat there in the background with Yak talking. He was terrific, had a nice long life filled with awards. He didn't pass away until he was in his 90s. So right now, get ready to laugh, get ready to have some fun, right here on A Word on Westerns. Got we got all the cowboys here tonight. And, uh, if there's an Indian raid out there, there'd be nobody to save us except Hugh O'Brien and George Montgomery. I haven't seen so many smiling, happy faces on cowboys since Mary Beth Hughes came into town years ago. <laughs> no, she was a great little actress. A lot of fun on locations. Whether she's in the picture or not. In my <laughs> Yak, I got a toast to make to you. Doctor said I could have one drink a day. This little baby is for July 14th, 1997. <laughs> but as you know, the Autry and I found out you can get just as drunk on water as you can on land. It, uh, I've got a note here from Autry because Yak taught him to ride, um, taught him to mount a horse. I think he taught him to sing too. <laughs> but uh, he was doubling at the same time at the two guys that became real great from Republic, Mastock, Lone Star, John Wayne, and Gene Autry at the same time over there. And uh, really did a great job. I, uh, there's a lot of great stuntmen, a lot of great stars here. You know, I see Bobby Fuller. I mean, wonderful. Hadn't made a picture in... <laughs> I hadn't made a picture in 
15 years. Still shaves his legs every day. <laughs> he ran it. Bobby Blake, Yak used to double him as Little Beaver on his knees. <laughs> And uh, Mahoney, all the great guys here. I, I think I'm the only sidekick left. I, I'll tell you it's a, well, it's a, it's a sad thing. I don't know how you leading men. You know Bob Steele, Audrey Rogers, Lone Ranger, Yak, all of them, and uh, Charlie Sterrett. but old Gabby and Smiley and Andy and Chill and Edgar Buchanan and. Slim Pickens and Tonto and Fuzzy Knight, Al St. John, they are all gone. Just, uh, I guess I'm going to have to just do my drinking alone. I don't know. <laughs> First time I uh, met Autry, uh, Yak had arranged for me to see him because uh, there's going to, he needed a new sidekick. Smiley had gone with somebody else. And he'd set up an appointment for me to see Gene down at the Brown Derby in the afternoon. So I come running in. I went over to the bartender. I said, where can I find Gene Autry? He said, you're standing on him. <laughs> so we, we got along all right from then. Like all Western pictures, you know, you get out there on location and it's lonesome. You got nothing to do. We didn't like to drink. It just, just something to do when we were drunk. <laughs> and you'd call home and, uh, I know a guy, actor called home, he had a Mexican maid. And he called home, and the Mex this Mexican maid answered the phone. He said, put my wife on the phone. He, she said, the senora is in bedroom, in bed. He said, get her out of bed, bring her to the phone. No, no, it said, she's in bed with a man. He said, what? She repeated it. He said, you've got to kill them. You've got to shoot them both. She said, no, no. He said... I'll give you $20,000 when I get home from a location. Now go into my uh, den, look in the top drawer of the, of the desk, there's a gun in there. You shoot them both. I'll give you $20,000. She said, see. So then there's a long pause. She finally comes back to the phone and says, I did. I shot them both. And I threw the gun in the pool. He said, pool, is this one, three, four, six? Yakima Canut, that name has been in uh, Western uh, films as long as any of us can remember. Uh, Yak, you came right uh, from the rodeo circuit and starred in some silent serials at Mascot, didn't you? That's right. Uh, in the serials in the old days, was it, uh, did you do your own stunts and then you started being a stunt man? And uh, I did all my own stuff and created some stuff that had never been done. If ever I worked with a stunt man, I most certainly had to guide him and tell him what to do and how to do it. Yeah. The great uh, uh, scene that you did many times, you did it in Stagecoach with John Wayne and uh, Seminium was the uh, the drag, the Stagecoach drag oh, where you would go out, out on the wagon tongue and you'd fall beneath the Stagecoach. It would run over you and you'd grab the boot and pull up. Did you first do that in uh, Mascot in the old days? Uh, I did it the first time, actually. By accident, or was it no? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, figuring out stuff, I'd, I'd read, take the script home, yeah. go through it, and wherever I could put something into the coach to do, or Wayne to do, yeah. and I'd show him how to do it. And mm -hmm. A lot of time, do it for him. And what was the most, of that one scene, what was the most thing you had to worry about on that? What's that, going underneath? Yeah. <laughs> Getting run over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the, yeah. you had to have a good set of horses. Well, you had to have a set of horses and uh, a good driver. A hidden you driver. To keep him in line, yeah. and he could scream and let you know if he'd get out of control or something, you know. But uh -huh. he had to, 
you had to get a thing started running and then keep it that way and you'd drop under and catch yeah. the back end of the wagon and hope it all worked coach and come up over <laughs> yeah the in those days in the early days you could do the what they call a running w that you started uh that was to make the horse fall wasn't it yes mm -hmm. how did that work well it worked you put the uh, gimmick on the feet padded very so you could tighten it up and there's no hurt to it and then you run the uh, cable small airplane cable run it up through and across and down and to the other side and uh, you fasten these so you never see them and when they hit the end, the horse would be nailed down at the other, other end. Of the cable. When he hit the place, he'd just snap the feet and snap them up, pull it on, and cut the cable. Mm -hmm. And they'd do a turnover and get up and run off. Was a horse ever hurt that way? I never had a horse hurt. You send your man, you fellas are doing a lot of screaming. Send the man out here and I'll show him how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So get a horse out, put the things on him, and and uh, tell him where he could stand and watch it, turn it over, and then they say, now look the horse over and see how bad he's hurt. <laughs> and uh, They never check the cowboy to see if he's hurt or not. <laughs> no, that's a different story. Working with horses so much and all, that was from your rodeo days, I guess you were the world's champion. You rode, uh, there's a statue up in uh, the Dakotas of the mm. great horse. Uh, oh, that bad. Yeah, um, temporary. Temporary. No one had rode in, in uh, you you rode him in a, the rodeo for the well, only I, uh, time I guess he was ever ridden. They uh, told me about this horse they had. So they made a, made a deal. They have to pay me 500 on the, just on the, on the ride. And uh, they have the horse there and everything said and all I had to do was just ride him. And so I... Got that done pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> and was, He's a great horse. He was a great horse and flying. I never could understand how so many people rode him. Mm -hmm. They bucked off for him. Yeah. I mean, he was too easy. I, mean, <laughs> I could I couldn't understand him because to me it was just a, just a lead pipe cinch. Well, the great scene too in the movies in uh, at. Uh, the mascot was a devil horse, where you... Uh, the devil horse, yeah, well, that, I give him that name. It, hmm. We, uh, it's a pretty good horse, you were. Yeah, well, th it looked to me as if you were going to get killed in that at any minute. And, uh, now, you later became the, uh, of course, the dean of all stunt men, and then you had on the side, you would teach actors how to do mounts and rides. I know Gene Autry always... Oh, I... I to all those fellows that they could, after you get acquainted with them and show that they, did, they can do things, then you'd show them how and start them off easy and give them things you could make the tough stuff right up to the point, but when they got to real close, they could do something and make it look like the fellow was really doing the whole thing. Yeah. How about working with Wayne now? You and Wayne were built so close it's hard to tell where uh, what you were doing and what he was doing. Well, we... Uh, I, I <laughs> took him to one side, and we we practice fight one another, you know. Yeah. And boy, we get in there every once in a while. He'd get me mad, and every once in a while he'd get mad. <laughs> and we kind of do a little thing. But he was he was really a nice nice fellow. And uh, well, he gives you credit for a lot of his success. He did well, because of those stunts you did. Uh, they were kidding one day. He, he was about. Uh, you were beginning to get a little tiny bald spot on the back of your head, and uh, they got some mail that uh, in the fight scenes, when his hat flew off, they could see the bald spot, and he made you put shoe polish on it. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, he, he get it around. He, um, <laughs> he had, had me stand there, and I what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Painting you up a little bit. <laughs> Turn the shoe polish on your head. Yeah. To Going with the wind, you did a, a scene now where you had to lead the horse that Clark Gable uh, led uh, the horse and wagon with uh, Virginia Lee mm -hmm. out of Atlanta when it was burning. Now, mm -hmm. that looked like a dangerous scene. Did you have that? You couldn't plan that, could you? No, it, it was all open. I had it where it looked like I was going through fire, but I'd have 
camera sitting back here. It'd be a big fire shooting up here, and back here a ways to be shooting up. But that camera was sitting to where the thing looked like it was all. <laughs> you really so up, but you wasn't getting anywhere near the fire. Oh my! What uh, the the last stunt you did was when you were doubling uh, Clark Gable. What was that? Oh, when I got hurt. Yeah, Boomtown. Wasn't Boomtown. It? Yeah, that's right, Boomtown. It. Uh, I taught him how to do the thing. But he uh, he got mixed up on one thing and just got me in a corner, and uh, the horse turned to flip, and then <laughs> Gable was on one side, and the they, uh, horse lit right on top of me, uh, really. Saddle horn went in right into you. Yeah, into my stomach, uh -huh. and. Uh, Oh, I just rolled over. <laughs> that was close. We packed were me out. <laughs> worried about you. Did uh, from then on, it was just uh, uh, directing and uh, teaching your son, who became. Uh, oh no, I was. Before that, it was completely healed. I was doing oh. stunts again. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. You know, one thing uh, we see a lot of is horses going over a cliff, and. Uh, I have, and having made a few pictures with Western, I know that you can't get a horse to do anything he doesn't want to do. Now, how could you get a horse to jump off of a cliff? Well, you put him up in a place with a good platform and a good boards that you can't see. They're solid and covered and greasy. And uh, you turn that horse around and he hits it. He tries to catch his show and even in the way he goes, he makes a pretty good slide. You just slide, slide him off the cliff. <laughs> slide him off the cliff. And I never got one of them hurt. And I put one of them off a hundred, a little over a hundred feet in the Little Bighorn River. What do you think is the most dangerous stunt you ever did? Or did you ever uh, figure it out? No, it's pretty hard to, pretty hard to figure one of them. Once in a while, like one that was everything going fine, some little turn in it or something, and really puts you in a bad spot. But you fight your way out. <laughs>